Hey, what's up? It's me, Jessica Jane. I was just wondering if you've ever sat and thought to yourself, Jessica, what are signs that a woman likes me but doesn't ever want me to know? Well, if so, I'm glad you asked because while I have done so many different variations of this video, this one is things we women do when we never, ever want you to find out that we actually like you because you finding out would be detrimental to everybody. And to make sure you never miss out on another opportunity to find out the hidden signs that we women are sweet on you or another one of my videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button with the notification bell. Okay, so like I said, the caveat here being, even if you see these signs, it doesn't necessarily mean anything for you. Like, what are you gonna do about a situation where it wouldn't behoove you to make a move? But, cause you'll never get tired of hearing these signs, lo and behold, this video. But listen, I'll tell you right now, I posted this thing on Instagram this morning about if somebody isn't super gung-ho about you, there's no reason to be super gung-ho about them. And if you know you're not in a place where you have a woman as loyal and dedicated as Lula Lady right here, where you want to get women wanting you and desperate for you and chasing you and adoring you in ways that you deserve and really want, check out my video on the override effect right here, which teaches you guys step by step, it's three steps, exactly how to create emotions in us women and intensify them to get us thinking about you nonstop, even when we're not around you, and chasing you and making moves on you so that you don't have any doubt or need any of these signs because we will be just as into you as you're into us. So check Check it out right here right now if you haven't or go to speechsparkarazzle.com. So the first sign that she likes you and doesn't ever want you to know is that she'll just straight up leave the room when you enter. I'll tell you right now and I've told you guys this several times throughout our years together that back in the day I had a boyfriend who had an identical twin brother and you know what I started to fall for his twin brother because his twin brother looked exactly like him and didn't treat me like shit. So of course I'm gonna fall for this guy. But I obviously never wanted to act on it. I never wanted him or anybody to know for that matter, but my feelings were undeniable. So in order to control and contain all my feelings for this man, I actually did all these signs, but one of the biggest signs was every time he walked into the room, I had to leave. I just had to. It literally pained me to be in the same room as him because all I would do was just like gawk at him and like longingly stare into his eyes. Now I'll tell you right now, it's not like she's walking out in a huff or she's like rolling her eyes and stomping away. Like she is just very plainly ex excusing herself because she doesn't want you or anyone else to see just how lovingly and adoringly she looks at you. Usually that's why it happens. That's why I did it. Which then brings me to number two, which is a more modern take on this. I actually never did it because back then we didn't have social media, but despite never speaking to you, she still watches all your stories. Now granted, this is only for men who have, I guess Facebook has stories, Snapchat has stories, and Instagram has stories. Maybe TikTok, I don't know anything about that platform, but whatever. But it's basically her getting her fix of you when she's not able to in person. Again, it's very innocent. Plenty of people probably watch her stories and shit. So she probably very innocently thinks he's not going to think anything of it. But it's her being able to get pieces of you without actually getting pieces of you. Now, the third one is she's never around when you are, but she should absolutely be there. So for instance, maybe it's a family friend and she's never around when there's family gatherings or like a a mutual friend gathering and if you're there she's not there or a work gathering she doesn't show up when you have made a point to let everybody know you're gonna show up I'll tell you right now when I started to really really fall for my ex's identical twin brother I just would not go out with them when they were all gonna be out together if I knew he was gonna be there I just I wouldn't partake in any group activities where he would be involved and people would be like why isn't Jessica here that's so random and it was because again like if y'all motherfuckers saw how I acted around this man, you would know I was in love with him and not my ex anymore. Again, it's one of those things. It's self-preservation, especially if we know it's not supposed to go somewhere or we don't want it to go anywhere. I've had clients over the years talk to me about falling for coworkers. And even when they divulged that they did have feelings for these women, these women were like, well, fuck that. I'm not going to risk my job or reputation. So yeah, we can still be sweet on you and not want it to go anywhere. That's an extremely realistic thing. So yeah, especially women in the workplace 
or if you're her boyfriend's best friend. It's instances like those where we're like, well, fuck, I don't want to ruin things. So yeah, sometimes we don't want you to act on it. And sometimes we have no intention on acting on it either. So we will just not show up where you're showing up. Now, the fourth one is a little bit in line with number two, which is you'll hear from other people that she's asking about you, talking about you, but she never talks to you. For instance, going back to my ex's identical twin brother, you bet your ass I always asked about him. I asked how he was doing. I asked how his work life was. I always asked if he was dating anybody, seeing anybody. I always asked, was he there at that party? Always. I'm not sure if they told him, but I was always asking because again, it's trying to get those bite-sized pieces of you whenever we can because it's the only way we could get our fix. And the last one, if she can't avoid being around you, she acts very serious in front of you. When you know that she's not like that. Now, y'all know me. You know how reckless and fucking silly and sassy I am? I am myself across the board. There's almost no instances in my life where I don't act exactly how you'll see me on these videos. So that being said, every time that motherfucker walked into the room, I was very like, hey, what's up? How are you? Cool. Yeah. No, school's good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go get some chips. Very serious. No inflection in my voice whatsoever. Super deadpan. Super monotone. In a way, I subconsciously did not want him to hear any feeling <laughs> in my voice when I spoke to him. Because if I veered off the monotone at all in any way, this is what I would sound like. Hi, how are you? Oh my God, really? Wow. So yeah, very controlled tone of voice, very monotonous, and you know she doesn't act like that. But okay, yeah, here are the signs, but like, what the fuck are you gonna do about it? If you do, don't be surprised when she rejects you, especially in the workplace, especially if she's dating your friend, especially if she's dating your identical twin brother. <laughs> but like I said, you deserve to have somebody who's fuck yeah about you. And if you know you're not having that effect on women now, and you want women to look at you like you are the man we would move mountains for to be with, like we would go against our biological nature and chase after you. Make the move on you. Try to get you into bed. Find out how to do so in this video right here or go to speaksparkarazzle.com. And yeah, fine, watch out for these signs, but really, what are you gonna do about it? She doesn't want you to do anything about it. But whatever, now you know. And thanks for watching as always. I'll see you guys next time.